What's up, everyone, and thank you so much for joining this episode. Today, I want to talk about disaster recovery and how to implement some automations behind it with PowerShell and automation accounts. If you like the content of this channel, please subscribe, hit the notification bell to keep up with new uploaded material and share it with others. To give you a little bit of context for our discussion today, let's say you have an organization and you need to adopt a business continuity and disaster recovery strategy in order to keep your data safe, your applications and workloads online when planned and unplanned outages occur. And you start using Azure Site Recovery Services, which helps to ensure business continuity for your business apps and workloads running during outages. You use it for replicating your VMs, your workloads from a primary site to a secondary site, and you have implemented an infrastructure where if an outage occurs in your primary region, you can easily go to the portal and flip a switch to get your infrastructure up and running in, your, in a secondary region. And this is all great and beautiful, but the only problem here is that it requires for someone to go to the Azure portal, hit the failover again, and uh, hit the failover button. Once it's done, you need to click on commit, wait, and also enable replication once again to reprotect your VMs. On top of that, you might also need to create additional resources in your secondary region in order to have your infrastructure up and running as it's supposed to. And maybe this is not a big deal if you have just a few VMs, but when you have an entire infrastructure with large VMs, this could be a time consuming task. And this could also affect your recovery time objective or RTO, which is the amount of time that it takes to complete a recovery or full restore. Let me go even further. How about when the outage in your primary region is fixed? You need, well, you need to fail back, right? Which means go to the portal, click on the failover switch again, commit, reprotect, rinse and repeat. So the question here is, if there is a way to automate at least most of this task, and fortunately for us, yes, there is a way to automate it, uh, at least a lot of this. And it's where I want to drive your attention today. Now, let me be clear about this. At the moment of this recording, Microsoft says that failover isn't automatic, which means that the in order to initiate a failover, you can use the portal or PowerShell uh, script to trigger the failover. Now, that doesn't mean that you cannot create some sort of monitoring if your machines are not responding and you can configure some automation runbook to call a script and trigger a failover. So in today's demo, I wanted to give you an idea on how we can leverage a PowerShell script and automation accounts to easily failover, commit, trigger the replication, and create the resources needed to have the infrastructure up and running in your secondary region. Now, I think it's very important to understand the infrastructure we currently have and compare it with what's required to have disaster recovery implemented correctly. So before going to the demo, I want to talk about the requirements first. For this, you will need one or more Azure VMs in a supported region. This could be your application servers, your SAP HANA servers, etc. Uh, the source VM storage and a source network that uh, Azure VMs can be managed or have none managed disk spread across storage accounts. And in regards, in regards networks, uh, VM can be, VMs can be located in a one or more subnets in a virtual network in the source region. You will also need a cache storage account, basically in the source region. During replication, VM changes are stored in the cache before being sent to a target storage. And the cache storage accounts for this purpose, it should be standard. All right, so this is my architecture. I have two VMs with port 80 configured and they are behind an internal load balancer. This load balancer has a health probe, a front end IP and a back end pool with my VMs. Now there is a NAT gateway here. And the reason why there is a NAT gateway attached to the subnet is because if the VMs are behind a standard internal load balancer, by default, it wouldn't have access to the Microsoft 365 IPs, such as login.microsoftonline.com. And well, Microsoft recommends that for outbound access, you can create an Azure NAT gateway. 
Now, this will depend on your infrastructure needs, but basically, in order to replicate the Azure VMs, they need outbound connectivity to install the site recovery mobility service extension in the VMs and register them in the recovery vault. I would advise to always check the documentation from Microsoft for this. Now, going back to the diagram, we are going to simulate that for X reason, we need to fail over to a secondary region and I will be using PowerShell to trigger the failover. This will check the access to the cache storage account and it will create the VMs in the secondary region. But notice that in my primary region, I do have an internal load balancer like I mentioned before. And I need that to be created as well in the target region. Well, that's when the automation account runbooks come into play and when the failover occurs, this will call my automation account to create the remaining resources and add the VMs behind the load balancer so my infrastructure could be consistent. When preparing the vault to start replicating your Azure VMs, there are a few components or objects that get created like, for example, a fabric. Uh, the fabric is an object in the vault that represents an Azure region where the VMs are protected. So we will need two, uh, one for ECUS two, uh, as a primary fabric and the one in central US acting as a recovery fabric. One thing that is very important is that only one fabric object can be created per region. If you enable the site recovery replication for a VM in the Azure portal, this will create a fabric object automatically for you. And if a fabric object exists for a region already, you can create a new one. So it's going to give you an error. Another thing that it gets created is a protection container. And this is basically a container used to group the replicated items within the fabric. Uh, so what we'll need to as well, one for the primary container in the primary fabric and a recovery container in the recovery fabric. Another component that gets created is a protection container mapping. So basically this, uh, this is responsible to maps the primary protection container with a recovery protection container and a replication policy. Also a cache storage account. And if you don't have one or don't specify one, Azure will create one for you. And this is used to hold the replication changes temporarily before the changes are moved to the recovery Azure region. Also another thing is the network mappings and uh, the network mappings maps the VNets in the primary region to the VNet in the recovery region where it should fail over to. And this is my last slide, I promise, but I think it's very important to discuss when it comes to automating some of this task. So let's talk about recovery plans. Although you can trigger failovers with individual VMs, you can use something more effective to orchestrate the deployment like recovery plans. The recovery plans allows you to define a systematic recovery process on how machines fail over and how they start and recover after failover. So recovery plans could help you to impose order and be more consistent and repeatable. Uh, you can create groups of VMs and create pre and post actions, and you can use recovery plans to call automation runbooks to deploy additional resources like we were going to do here today. All right, so now that we understand all the requirements to start using site recovery services and we cover all the basics, let's get to the demo, shall we? Okay, I will switch to my GitHub account and uh, you will go to my GitHub account, click on repositories, look for the one that says automating DR and we will copy the code and run git clone and the link to clone the repository locally on my machine. I already done it, so I will not do it again. <laughs> But once you are in, you will look for the infra folder where the main.availabilityzone.bicep file is. And if you open this file, this is the file that will create all the infrastructure for you. Just find the parameters file.json and edit it accordingly with your own values. You can review all the templates later on, but the main bicep file is calling all those modules to create the infrastructure, which at the moment I only have two resource groups, one in East US 2 and the other one in Central US. In fact, let me show you what I have there. Here is my resource group in East US 2 and you can see it's empty and it only has a user managed identity with contributor role in both resource groups. 
I will use this manage identity to authenticate with Azure on the automation account and call a runbook to create the rest of the resources in my target region. Let's switch to Central US Resource Group, which it only has an automation account. And let me show you the runbook real quick so you can see I'm using the manage identity. And this script is using a storage account to call an ARM template, which I also included in the repository as an example on creating a load balancer. Going back to my Visual Studio code, once you edit the parameters file with your own values, just go ahead and run az deployment group create and then dash g for group, name of your resource group, and you're going to put template file and you point it to the main bison file and parameters and then you point it to the parameters file and hit enter. Let me switch to my Azure portal to my resource group and if I go to the deployments blade I can see something it's going on already. I will pause the video and wait until it finishes deploying all my resources. This will take approximately 40 minutes. After a few minutes, you will notice that there is a deployment task called ASR replication. If you go to the to your resource group, you will find one PowerShell script uh, there called enable replication. Let's click in there and see what's going on. In the outputs, you will see that it will check for those components we talked earlier, like the fabric, the containers, and if it doesn't exist, it will create one for us to start enabling the replication. The other place you can see this happening is in the vault under site recovery jobs, as you can see here. In the meantime, this is done. I will go and set up some additional configurations in my site recovery vault. You can see my VMs are enabling the protection now. Let's switch to the site recovery infrastructure and click on network mapping. In here, I will create the mapping between the networks that I will be failing over to. I will click on the plus sign here and select my source VNet and my target VNet. Now notice what it says on top. Network mappings gives a default target VNet selection at the time of enabling replication, meaning that is already set up when I enable the replication, but since I want to be very specific, hence the reason I'm adding it here uh, instead of using a default one. By adding a mapping here, you are just modifying the default one. Here you can see my replication policy and there is this extension update settings. I will click switch uh, to switch this on. Basically what this does is that it will create an automation account and it will use it to manage the site recovery mobility extension and its version to install it on the VMs for you. In other words, you don't need to worry about managing the version of this extension and Microsoft will do that for you. That is why Microsoft, it says that it's, they highly recommends you to enable this setting. Once enabled, let's go back to see how we are doing and it seems it's still in progress. I will pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, I see one error here, so let's see what is it exactly. Let's click on one of them, one of the VMs. It's complaining about network and post replication configurations. It's saying that the subnet selected it, uh, is not available in the target region. Oh, okay, so let me check on the my replicated items in the properties, um, specifically in the network and fair enough. Let me click on edit and specify the network here. I will do the same for my other VM. And I will go back and restart the failed job and see the results. Good, everything is green now. Last thing we're going to do in this video is create a recovery plan. So I will go to the recovery plans blade, click the plus sign. I will name this as full recovery, specify my source and target regions and select the model, which is in my case, 
uh, resource manager. And now I can see my two VMs here and I will add them. Now I will click on the plan to add my automation account. And for that, I will create a pulse action. I will give it a name and choose my automation account with the run book that has my script. All right, let me go to the deployments play to make sure all deployments are done. And fair enough, deployments are all green. So we are finally ready for our disaster recovery drill. And now that it's done, I can go ahead and delete the, this deployment script called enable replication since I will no longer need it. All right, guys. So in this video, we went over the requirements to start using Azure Site Recovery Services. We discussed the components and the objects that get created when we enable the replication for the VMs. We deploy our infrastructure in Azure and configure additional settings in the Site Recovery Infrastructure in the Azure portal. In part two, we will go over the failover and failback scripts, perform a disaster recovery drill, and we will also validate the results. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and see you in the next video.